Hi, Roy here on my channel, Roy Reads Anything, and this is another Victober video. So, Victober, the event celebrating Victorian literature that was devised by Katie at Books and Things. And we, because Jenny's Hello! right here. I'm here. Um, it is I. We're going to do the Victorian Journey tag. So, this is a tag that was devised by. Roz, Scally Dandling About the Books, and Tilly, Tilly Shelf, based on the Shakespeare Journey tag from the Shake Temper event that I did um, last year. So, um, yeah, let's get into the questions. Let's get into it. We're both going to answer them, I think. We'll um, give it a go. So, what was your first experience reading Victorian literature, and how was it? Ah, what was your first? Well, I was thinking about that. I mean, we had some... Some of my kids' books were Victorian. I think I had um, an illustrated Robert Louis Stevenson Child's Garden of Verses that I really liked. Yeah. I think there was a Water Babies about that was some sort of diluted for kids' version. I didn't really like that. Uh, but if I'm thinking about stuff I actually bought as an adult and like read deliberately these <laughs> William Morris uh, paperback reissues of William Morris fantasy novels written in the 1890s uh, part of the Ballantine adult fantasy series came out in the 1970s these were the thing so um, sorry there's a woman's bottom there <laughs> it's art it's art um, Cover her up for good So sake. this Poor was letter. sort of um, a series that was brought out to try to build on the popularity of Lord of the Rings uh, and in included lots of reissues. Um, and the idea was that William Morris was the sort of originator of fantasy, like high fantasy, epic fantasy set in imaginary worlds. And if I'm honest, probably pretended to like them more than I did. We all did, though. <laughs> we all did. You've got to remember there were there like, was nothing else. Not many other fantasy books, really. And, well, there was and, the, sh the sweepings up of Tolkien. Yeah, but you know that was a the gold was beaten pretty thin oh, there as God, well. Yes. Um, oh. So yeah, yeah uh, they're archaic language. I, I did actually reread The Wood Beyond the World recently and quite liked it. So yeah, probably I probably cite William Morris there. How about you, Doctor Jenny? Well. In third year juniors, which translates to year, I don't know, I would have been nine, right, eight yeah. or nine, um, in Mr. Parsons' class. I love Mr. Parsons, he was great. Mr. Parsons. Mr. Parsons. Um, we read in the for the booking class. They were all uh, Victorian books that year, so three terms, different book each term. Water Babies, Charles Kingsley, um, which is quite disturbing, because mm. drowning and death happens mm. halfway through. <laughs> um, Black Beauty by Anna Sewell, even more disturbing so oh god there's suffering there's suffering there's really? oh it's terrible oh my god horses yeah it's it's a it, yeah it's a real um gut punch black <laughs> beauty <laughs> in parts and half of david copperfield which in the school version was issued as the childhood of david copperfield um which ends at the point where he's got to his aunt's cottage. Oh, right. And there's Mr. Mr. Dick, the strange oh. kind of fae hmm. bloke thing. Yeah. Um, so, all very disturbing in their own way for yeah, a nine-year-old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, toughened us up. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, question two. Has the reading of a Victorian book ever brought you to tears? 
Black so Beauty. tell us more. You're Black saying Black Beauty. Beauty as well, are you? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> oh, it was so tragic. Mm. Then I, I think it's got a slightly happy ending, but, yeah, horses are harmed Ooh. in the making of that novel. Sounds terrifying. It's horrible. <laughs> it's really nasty. Well, I don't think I've got one reading a book... But if adaptations are sort of allowed, I think the uh, the musical Oliver exclamation uh, mark based on Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. I was taken to see that when it first came out. So this would have been yeah yeah. yeah, So this would have been nineteen sixty eight sixty nine, and well, no spoilers. But I, I was quite attached to the character of Nancy. Mm. Um, and <laughs> felt mm. it was a bit like how how can this be allowed to happen <laughs> and then to sort of make it worse I and mean, my, my parents must have really liked it because they bought the the lp oh no which had oh, a picture God. of nancy on the back oh. like standing in an alleyway I wouldn't have understood why she would be standing in an alleyway at the time but um yes yeah, so i think I, I remember pouring over this thing sort of hoping for a different outcome <laughs> three are there any people who have played a significant role in your Victorian literature journey? Well, I return to the inestimable Mr Parsons, mm. the third-year junior's teacher, who had many, many idiosyncratic pedagogic techniques. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he provided us with... Um, the 1960s equivalent of um, what you might call it, knives, box cutters. Oh, like Stanley well, knives. Stanley knives what? for sharpening our pencils. <laughs> right. Uh, at the age of nine, naked oh blades to sharpen your pencil. Um, he'd, some days he wouldn't. He'd, he'd, he'd just come into school that day and he wouldn't speak. So he did the whole class in silence, which was wow. somewhat, somewhat strange. Um, but yeah, he was responsible for me reading the three most distressing novels a child could read at the age of nine. <laughs> In fact, Oliver, mm. uh, the, not, not Oliver, um, David Copperfield, child of oh, David Copperfield, was a walk in the park compared with Black Beauty. Mm. <laughs> oh God. Oh. Well, he's only got two legs for a start, compared to <laughs> at least four in Black Beauty. It's true. Oh. Well, well, I'm going to say, um, more re still in the world of education, but a lot more recently, the um, lecturers, researchers and fellow students in the EHU 19 group, which is part of Edge Hill University. So that's where I went to do a part-time MA pretty recently after I retired um, and learned loads and loads about Victorian culture, literature, history. Um, but all it was an MA in Victorian studies. Yeah, well, it was 19th century, 19th century studies, studies, yeah. Uh, so that all started because of this letter O. So during uh, during lockdown, I was fossicking about in the uh, in the attic, tidying some books, and the, the, there's this set of Dickens novels that I inherited, um, and um, they're quite nice. Though I, I could never I'm trying to figure out what this strange squiggle was on the front. I read it as. Narlofasheen. I thought perhaps it was like they were sponsored by a um, floor polish company. Or something. That's actually Charles Dickens' signature. Um, anyway, so my grandfather had put this rubber stamp uh, of his name and the year 1933 in when he got them. And I was looking at uh, Cecil W. O. Collins. Oh, yeah, that. Oh, I remember this as being like a the, the name Oosley which is actually a surname normally, but that had been added in as a, one of his middle names. And there was a, sort of a bit of a family mystery about that, that I set out to solve. So for a while I was doing stuff on ancestry and putting together family trees. And after a while I started getting other kind of documentation like uh, newspapers and maps and 
all sorts of things and, and really enjoyed that. Did solve the family mystery. Might tell you that another time. So anyway, so all of that kind of prepared me. When I started reading about this new master's degree in 19th century studies, I was thinking, oh, that sounds good. That module sounds good. That module sounds good. So um, yeah, and because the it's a group of academics who had like created their own like ideal masters course so they were like super enthusiastic and super knowledgeable um, and that was lovely and even though I was older than the lecturers and the students put together that was all fine and I really enjoyed it so Yay! those are my my Mr Parsons equivalent <laughs> um, moving on do you have a favorite film or tv adaptation of a Victorian book and what about one you'd like to see made? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm guessing Oliver doesn't figure for you. <laughs> I, didn't, yeah. I, I don't really like musicals either. No. Or at least I didn't then. So I don't uh, like any musicals made after 1949. Mm. So, um, but that's going off the point. Um, I thought the I think it might have been the BBC did an adaptation of Daniel Deronda. Mm. Not long ago, in the in the two thousand, um, which I just thought was fantastic, and I think I watched it end to end twice in one go because mm. I enjoyed it so much. Um, and now that was Jane Austen; she's not Victorian. No, I was going to mention the Aquatic Life hat. classic rookie mistake. But I'm not going to. <laughs> now. Um, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah was, that was, it was good. Terrific. North and South, they did a good they did a good North and South as well. Mm. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Not the John Jakes one, obviously. No. <laughs> no, that was nice. Um see I'd probably go older. I mean growing up Sunday tea time they seem to be either Jane Austen or Victorian ones, so there was a really good Jane Eyre in the nineteen eighties. Um, but I'm going to say the uh, Jeremy Brett Sherlock Holmes oh. series, which was, I just thought, you know. Nice choice. Things really came together. The, there's people who had, like, cut their teeth on making, like, period dramas, like Upstairs, Downstairs, and now all of those production values were being a applied to g genre crime stories, and Jeremy Brett was perfect for the part, and that was just lovely. But... But. Which character in Victorian literature most resembles you or you identify with most? You can pass. I'm, I'm just, I, I can't think of. It's a difficult one, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is a difficult one. Because um, thing, the things I've listened to most recently have been George Eliot. Mm. And all her characters are great in their way, but they're very of their time mm. and of their Victorian time. Doesn't really, I don't really identify with that mm. or mm. find that. Mm. I like, there are characters I, I do really like. Mm. Um, but not to the point of thinking. Not to the point of thinking they're my gal. You'll write them whatever. on your... Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm on my rough book. T-shirts you have. You've got a Swallows and Amazons T-shirt, not Victorian. Yeah. You've got a Miss Lemon T-shirt, not, not Victorian. Victorian. So uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Got a Marge Piercy T-shirt, not Victorian. Mm. I've got um, Anna Green Gables T-shirt. Mm. Probably not Victorian. Not Victorian, I mm. think. No. But no, mm. Yeah, it's tricky one. If Anna Green Gable, oh, I tell you who, I tell you who, Joe from Little Women. Oh right, That's, right, she's right. She's definitely right, yeah. Victorian, and I yes. just saw with her, and I think she's fantastic. It's um, out of the scope of Victober, just because that's British and Irish. Oh, but, okay. Um, well. It's in, it's in the, it's a, in the zone. Oh, in New isn't England, it? in it's zone. sort of British. <laughs> 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 oh dear, yeah. Yes. Um, hmm. Well, I find it equally difficult, though. I, I, I do quite like Sigismund Smith in The Doctor's Wife, for those people who've been reading that, <laughs> who's a sensation novel author and uh, quite a comical character in a book by Mary Elizabeth Braddon that I'm going to be finishing today. Right, moving on. Do you have a favourite moment 
scene or line from Victorian literature. Tell us about it or read it. Um, ooh, ooh. The only scene that comes to mind is from the most recent adaptation of David Copperfield. Mm. And it's the character Mr Dick, who I mentioned before, I think he's played by Hugh Laurie. He is in, in that one, film. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, trying to fly a kite, or flying a kite, yeah. on the kind of um, common outside the house, his aunt's house, mm, mm, David Copperfield's mm, aunt's mm, house, mm, which was very lovely. Mm. And I think yeah. Hugh Laurie's portrayal of Mr Dick was... was Because Mr Dick a, is a kind of oddity mm, until yeah, you realise yeah, yeah. that there are things that would explain Mr Dick that mm, we know now yeah, about yeah. Um, psych psycho stuff yeah yeah of that. neurodivergent that's what I'm trying to say yeah, I suppose so I think yeah. he's a neurodivergent character talking of Mr Dick talking of Mr Dick you know I did that research project about the um use of drama at the college mm. so Edgehill University was a women's teacher training college and it opened in 1885 um, and I did a thing looking at uh, perform performance there because although they you know they were training to be teachers it turned out they were there were lots of plays and other kinds of live performances put on and we figured out what they were and found lots of interesting documentation and there was an exhibition um, but when they were doing tableaus or scenes from Dickens scenes from Dickens was quite a thing mm. for these young women to act out often just to entertain each other or sometimes as sort of part of some like event um, and the Mr Dick was of, often in those oh, that's interesting. so they'd, they'd pick bits of David mm, Copperfield I, do, I, I quite like Mr Dick mm. now I think yeah. about him I do think he's a yeah Mine's a bit different. Mine would be from Dracula when uh, the arrival at the castle, the early part of Dracula, when uh, Jonathan Harker travels to <laughs> Castle Dracula. Do you have to do that whenever you say Harker? You do, you do, you do. Well, it's a thing, isn't it? He's there to Harken. experience things. He's there to Harken. Um, in virtually all the adaptations, it's always a really cool scene. However, divergent they are from the uh, the the source material but it's it's, it's a, just a brilliant way that the, the the book takes you into the the gothic parts of the narrative yes the Start children of, of the night what sweet music they make I was wondering if anyone's ever done a team up of dracula and black beauty <laughs> does any Victorian literature intimidate you? If so, what and why? <laughs> Tell me. Dickens. Oh. Well, anything with really long sentences. And that's like Dickens most Victorian literature. I'm, at, I'm of an age now where <laughs> the softening of my brain due to fibromyalgia means that um, I ain't got much memory sometimes. <laughs> Um, and a sentence that is so long that by the time I've got to the end of it I can't remember what the beginning was um, it's not great for me really mm, <laughs> so, mm. uh, so yeah just all of it all of its sentences are too long yeah. see I probably would have said the same but of course I've had to had to read some as part of that course mm, I mentioned mm. um, and I did really enjoy it, but you have to kind of get into the vibe. Mm. Um, probably only really read A Christmas Carol. It's a bit of a different kettle of yeah. fish. So I would have felt that way. And I would still say, I think I said before, it's like um, it's like eating big fruit cake compared to, say, a plate full of biscuits. Um <laughs> Which uh, and not I, a I nice Victoria sponge. No, well, I think your sort of sensation novels and such are a bit more like sponge with right, a right. nice, nice zesty hit of jam every every mouthful. Mm. Whereas, yeah, there's a lot to digest in Dickens. I think um, I'm prepared. I'm prepared to believe that they're good if you yeah. if you 
break through the Dickens barrier. I think the um, us listening to a lot of George Eliot mm. was uh, a great experience, although I have read a lot of George Eliot um, and quite enjoyed it. And now we're listening to Barchester Chronicles yeah. by Anthony Trollope. Trollope yeah. Um, and they're kind of late Victorian, are they, or mid Victorian? Mm, kind There's of trains mid, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm but sure the 1850s have been mentioned. It, yeah. But, um, I think they might have set them a little bit in the past. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, I think they were. If you get if you get a good reader, mm. um, which we have with the Barchester Chronicles, then they do all the work of parsing the immensely long sentences sure yeah yeah so yeah. uh yeah okay, i read yeah, them with my yeah. listening ears rather than my looking eyes mm. <laughs> um i probably do feel still intimidated by by huge chunks mm. um and uh, which doesn't necessarily mean classics i mean varney the vampire is gigantic it just sounds like it's a kid's I know, Nazi. yeah. <laughs> Reg Varney, the vampire, oh, from, that on the fantastic. buses. Um, but <laughs> on the buses, night service. Mm. <laughs> I think now you've made it good now. Um, okay. Last Penultimate bus. question. What tips would you give to someone early on in their Victorian literature journey? I would say... Pick stuff that's like the stuff you already like. So if you already like um, kind of intricate family drama, mm -hmm. pick something, someone like um, Mrs Gaskell, mm -hmm. George Eliot maybe, Trollope a bit. If you like sort of domestic or pastoral comedy mm. pick something like Trollope if you like horror mm. pick one of your lots of things yeah your yeah. ridiculous people if you like occult then there's loads of that talk to him about yeah. that <laughs> I know nothing um, but yeah go for things that are like what you already enjoy don't if you already enjoy high fantasy do not pick William Morris because it will make you want to tear the very eyes from your head with Just boredom. And um, maybe audio books to give you a sense of yeah, the way the yeah. stuff flows. Yep. Um, find, find audio books with a reader that you enjoy listening to because you can hear snippets mm. Mm. can't mm. you I would say with audio books if it's a man reading make sure he does good women's voices yeah because it can be a bit it can just sound crap yeah. Uh, but you, yeah you, mm. that I basically would say the same if you like a, a sort of genre or type of thing trace it back because a lot of things come out of the Victorian mm. era you know crime novels um occult supernatural stuff um things like that adventure stories sort of sword and sorcery um uh, fantasy apparently william morris was no. the, uh, the, the, fa really? the, the father of modern fantasy um <laughs> I, would, I think i would also say don't feel you have to stick to the male pale stale canon mm. There's loads of women authors. Yeah. Um, there are some authors of colour, maybe not in British Victorian literature. Mm. Mm. Um, there are some of um, a variety of sexualities. Um, so, yeah, don't don't think that you've got to just read Dickens. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, you don't don't have to pick a mountain to climb, no. do you? 
Oh, also, can. don't don't expect it to be tame frock opera stuff mm. either. It's mm. um, you know, mm. these <laughs> jaw dropping, shocking material <laughs> is can be in, can well be encountered in the in this era. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Um, finally, number nine. What is your top? recommendation read recommended read for other readers of victorian literature i've got one while you're thinking mm. uh, which is the beetle by richard marsh oh. so this was uh, it's a supernatural story that it, originally it, it outsold dracula when it came Long. out came out about the same time and um, it was all about the beetle and uh, unlike dracula <laughs> has been adapted into every medium and has you know a million sequels the beetle kind of is its own thing really so uh i won't say too much about it but it's very atmospheric um lots of lots of cool elements to it so uh, yeah the, the beetle by richard marsh track it down or lady audley's secret which is a uh, by by mary elizabeth braddon it's a so-called sensation novel so it has that kind of cliffhanger serial thing going on um and it's another sort of prototype crime novel as well cool. anything from you um <coughs> from you from me um i can't think of anything offhand uh, if you want to be really harrowed read <laughs> Flat beauty. It sounds like it's a <laughs> must read. Oh god, those poor horses. <laughs> Surprised it hasn't been banned or anything that's been banned by now. Um Yeah. I can't mm. think of anything offhand. I mean I know books mm. that I've enjoyed were um Mrs. Gaskell's very enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Um, and something like Cranford, which is kind of a ah, pastoral yes. um, group of characters, novel. Yeah, Cranford's is, fun, is isn't it? Lovely, I would yeah. kind of. Yeah. I think most people would probably get something out mm, of that. Mm. But yeah. if, they, if people like blood and guts and stuff, then they should come to you. Uh, yes, for, I have those things. For, for, making my body for work for recommendations. You fool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, folks, we'll say goodbye now. I think so. Yes. Thanks for that. Bye. Tra. Bye, you. So came they, three hours after noon, to where there was a clearing in the woodland and a long narrow plain, some furlong over, lay before them with a river running along it, and the wood rose on the other side, high and thick, so that the said plain looked even as a wide green highway, leading from some whence to some whither. At the edge hereof their way-leader, the sergeant, bade draw vain, and said, Lords, we are now in the lands of the Red Hold. Therein is mickle peril and dread to any save stout hearts as ye be, but meseems we are so steadied, that whatever may come out of the black valley of the grey weathers to the red hold, ye now may scarce mist. Yonder along this plain to the north lies the way to the said hold, and any man coming from the head of the valley is sure to come by the way we have come, and will pass us, not many yards at the worst, from where we now be. On the other hand, if any come to the hold, they all yea said this, and gat off their horses and lay quiet on the grass, not even speaking save softly. And when they had abided thus scarce an hour's pace, the squire, who was a man of very fine ear, held up his hand as though to bid utter silence, and all hearkened eagerly. Presently he said, Hear ye not. Said Arthur, Meseemeth I hear a faint tinkle as of a sheep bell. Said the squire, "'Tis the clashing of swords down the plain to the south, "'and meseemeth tis but of two. "'Ride we hither?' Quoth Baudwine, "'Make it stop! Make it stop! Make it stop!'